you don't want to spend your life, and I'm not. I'm saying this in general. I guess I know. She said this to me before. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like in regret, and right. like wishing right. that you sh- would have, should have, could have. Someone said that, like done these things or whatever, and then you never do them. You know, like that is mm-hmm. not. No, and then you will constantly have like this, like Nick was saying, like this thorn in your side or something. Like I should be doing this, but I'm not doing it because of X, Y, and Z. But X, Y, and Z is not going to change. So how can I still do the things that I love or do what I'm passionate about? Well, and one thing that Siobhan has said to me, you know, we've had these conversations in the past, is just that at the end of the day, it's on you. Like it's me. You know what I mean? So you know, we all own like our own lives. So if if I let that fear stop me from doing it, that can't be resentful of the job or you know the, or anything else. It's you know it's on me at the end of the day. We're gonna keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want us? Anyone else like to share? That a lot of people have, but I also look at my kids and I look at what I'm giving them. Mm-hmm. I want my boys to take risks. I want them to see that it's okay to step out of your comfort zone. I share my journey with them. You know, if I'm nervous about something, if I'm afraid of something, and I do it, and I come back and say, this is, you know, mommy was a little scared. Well, why were you scared, mommy? And I talk to them through that. So I think about them because because as moms and sisters and friends, people are going to leave. My children are going to leave the house. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not going to be there forever. Right. And so when I, it's just me, or if my husband dies, or it's just me, what do I have? Yeah. You know, I've poured into everybody else, and I haven't poured into myself. So I also think about that too. I don't want to be that. I don't want to have those regrets. And I see it, it's hard, it's a balance, because we're all very busy. But I see that, you know, it, it's important because it gives them, I look at my legacy and what I'm leaving them, those intangible, non-materialistic things that I'm giving them. And I recently discovered that I don't want that. Mm-hmm. And I kept, before I say maybe like two, three years, I was just like down on myself like, well, I need to get things in order in my life so I can re-enroll in school so I can get that done because I got to do that. So now I vision it as such a blessing that I had all those interruptions, if you will, because I think the universe is speaking to me saying, you know, there's something else that you should be doing. And, you know, as a nurse, sometimes the controversy for me is um, traditional medicine versus natural medicine. So I'm more interested in, like, holistic medicine and, um, you know, more uh, vegetarian-type lifestyle. So it's really in conflict, if you will, with what I've turned. But I think, um, I don't know what I study, but then they collaborate so wonderfully. I'm excited about that. So I'm not there, but I'm really excited about the um, possibilities. It's a great journey. I'm having a conversation with myself while I'm writing, and I'm getting fit at the same time. So for me, that's like the ultimate taking care of myself. As bad as heart disease is in women, I, I definitely want to get myself in a better place. No stress. No mental stress, no physical stress, and I think doing that yeah. is working on both. Yeah, I, love I, I just love talking to people mm-hmm. in the salon, and that made me want to now. I want to teach. Mm-hmm. Now I want to expand, and I don't know if I would have got that had I not followed my gift of doing hair. I don't think I would have mm-hmm. been able to engage and know that. Okay, you have a bigger. It's a, it's a bigger agenda. And you have to think about too, I think I think about all the time when I didn't, when I couldn't walk into my purpose. What was I not giving to the people who needed me? You know, all the people that sit in my chair and I talk to, that stories that you guys are sharing, that they need somebody to tell that stuff to, to, oh my God, this is working my nerves, the job is killing me, the kiss is this, or I want to do this, how do I do that? What was I not allowing those people, because they had nobody to, Yes, yes. So because I wasn't living in my passion, how was it limiting somebody else? So think of it like that. I've been wearing my hair like this probably since I was born. Okay. <laughs> 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 I, would have dressed, honey. I yes. am so tired of my hair being straight. So the last two weeks it was in a twist stout. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this is cute on me. Right. And I rocked it rather well, I'll say. And um, 
I didn't ask my husband if he liked it. And I was okay with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's and gross. I thank you. And I realized that I liked it. Yes. And not, not to be dogmatic or anything like that. And I want to say I didn't care if he liked it, but it was enough that I liked it and that I was comfortable. You know what I mean? I got a little lazy then for I twisted it after I straightened, straightened it. But um, that felt really good. You know, that, that felt really, really good. Um, and I'm fluffing it up in the mirror and he came in and he was like, oh, that's nice. I'm kind of like, oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That, that felt good, and, a, and after having that experience, it was then that I realized and noticed that I didn't ask him, mm -hmm. you know, and I was okay with that, and I wasn't looking for him to say, hey, I like it, because if he said he didn't like it, would I twist my hair again? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it just felt good that it was good enough for me. And that is gross. That was my training ground, and I didn't even know that I was being prepared to help you ladies deal with, that's a fun hairstyle, <laughs> you know, I had no idea, I had no idea, so, um, I literally hated that job and I would cry and I would cry and I would say to God, I don't want to be here anymore. How can I get out of this? And I got quiet and it was one of those things that, well, you can't get out of this because this is what you said you wanted. You said you had arrived if you had the office with the two windows and you had the vehicle and everybody in your family thought you were everything because you're the one that went to college and you're the one that got married and you know what I mean? So. I was having this, okay, okay, I know I said that, but I don't want it anymore. How do I get out of this? But I had to work through it. It's not a, you know, I would hate to tell you guys, it wasn't an overnight. Tuesday I didn't go to bed, and Wednesday I woke up and said I'm quitting my job. Mm -hmm. It was a process. Mm -hmm. Like, I had to retrain myself. It was definitely, and some of the process is painful. Yeah. Because you have to deal with self. And self is ugly, you know. Yeah. We can blame everybody else. Yeah. No, he did that. My mama did that. But sometimes the stuff that we do to ourselves, it's it's, it's hard to peel those layers back. So finally, I started working through my own issues, and I started skipping to work, the same job that I hated, because I knew I had a plan. Yeah. I gave myself a year. I saved money. I wasn't at the mall feeding my insecurities. Mm -hmm. I wasn't on the phone with Ray Ray and Pookie now. Right. coming over tonight, mm -hmm. okay? I'm keeping it real right now. Right. You know what I mean? That's good. Like That's I was good. really, I used to get in my closet and pray. Mm -hmm. My friend told me, she said, write notes on a box and put them in there and just things that you deal with. Mm -hmm. And I did it. I don't even know if she know that I did it, but I did. And I would put it in that box and I wouldn't think about that issue anymore. And after that year, I was, I'm free. Yeah. I'm free. Yeah. Starting to block the world off. Because when you're off, everybody thinks that you are available, available for them. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yourself. Mental health is not just, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It's not directed to just the job. Mental health day is, I might need a break from the kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. From all, everything. Yeah. I don't want to answer the call from dad, from auntie from no don't tell anybody just be in the house and be with yourself or That's do some things mean. that you love like what is some things that you may want to do but you don't have the time because you're always working what makes you happy and start to make a list a happy list of everything that I enjoy doing and then do some of those things on your mental health day but we have to give back to ourselves so yes Visit BeFreeProject.com or Amazon to purchase your copy of the Be Free Life Workbook today.